Thank you, Father Patty. That, that's a hard thing to follow, isn't it? I was a little nervous about giving this talk, and I was told, just be articulate and be brief. So uh, I'll, I'll do my best. First, I want to express my gratitude to Father Patty and the building committee for letting me do this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do the, a, a painting of this size. They were wonderfully supported through the whole process. There was just one thing that they insisted on. They said it has to be biblically accurate. And I asked, what does biblically accurate mean? And they, and they gave me a seating chart. They said the table's got to be curved, and John's got to be on one end, Jesus next to him, Judas sat next to Jesus, and then all the other apostles down to Peter who sat on the, the following, on the other opposite side. So I pointed out that Da Vinci didn't paint it that way, and most people might think that's kind of a funny composition. He said, it didn't matter, it's got to be biblically accurate, use the seating chart. So that meant we had to do a whole new composition, and I, uh, <clears throat> I, but before, so I had a lot of time to do research. This all happened like in 2018. And I had a trip planned to Italy with my family. And we, we went and we had these wonderful guides. And I found out that there are 33 Last Supper paintings in Rome. There are 18 Last Supper paintings in Florence. There are also paintings in Siena and Venice. And I tried to get to see all of them. Uh, my my wife and my granddaughter who would be were very patient and sweet about letting me do that. I came back and I did a lot of research on the internet, found over a hundred paintings of the Last Supper. And they all had one thing in common. Some had curved tables, but none of them got the seating chart and bought the patty. So, <laughs> so that meant we were gonna have to do a totally new composition and we wanted our painting to be like it was actually the night of the Last Supper in the upper room where Jesus said this is at the moment that Jesus said this is my body. And the objective of the painting, the, the composition was to have Jesus and the bread in his hand as the dominant figures in the painting. So I decided even though Judas was sitting next to Jesus during the meal, I decided he wasn't gonna partake in the first communion so I got him leaving through the back door. Uh, the, I did a lot of drawings to try to work out the composition, and it was, uh, it was it, this whole process was, was great and had a lot of challenges to it, primarily because of the size of the painting. It, it was going to have to be painted somewhere else and brought here and put up on the wall and just keep it where it would stay on the wall and stay flat on the wall, and it would be archival so that it would last for a long time. So we, the painting was done on three five foot by 10 foot aluminum panels that were prying and they were attached to plywood by, and finding five by 10 plywood was very difficult. We had to have it shipped down from Maine. <laughs> the, uh, then that, all that when it was put together was then painted with gesso and then I put the painting on the wall in my studio at my farm, which is a couple of miles from here. So planning the painting probably called the, took at least five times as long as actually doing the painting, uh, doing the composition drawings, preparing the panels. And then the fun part, we, had, we did a photo shoot where we got a number of people to come and, and we, had, we had to do it in my barn so we could control the light. And we built, I built curved tables and benches and bought all the accessories to sit on top of the table and we had, uh, we had the costumes made for all of the apostles. I hired the guy at Illustrated Ink where I bought the uh, aluminum panels to be Jesus. My son, my youngest son came down from Hattiesburg to play John. And then we had parishioners that played all the other parts except for Peter. I went to get pizzas for his Uncle Joe's to feed everybody and, I, and the, this guy Robbie was sitting at the bar and he became Peter so I came home with a Peter and with, with pizza and I do appreciate a lot Joey playing Judas that wasn't you know necessarily a role that everybody wanted to take but it's an important role in the, in the painting so uh, 
it, after I did all did all that, took a bunch of photos with my iPhone. I ended up wasn't happy with some of it. We did another photo shoot in Florida, and I finally ended up with five photos that we were able to cobble together in a, in a computer program to create a reference photo. I came by one day and all of a sudden the roof was on the church and I sort of panicked and had to start the painting. So I started with actually doing the painting on June 25th of last year. And as you know, the devil participated at that point because it was about 100 degrees outside and the first day I started to paint, my air conditioner quit. So a few days later, I had air, condi I had air conditioning and I ended up doing 18 painting sessions from a couple of hours to seven hours over a 10 week period, spent about 100 hours on the rolling ladder to do the painting. And some of the paintings, you, you may recognize the, 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 uh, the parishioners that, that actually posed because I did actual portraits. The others just inspired, including Jesus was, was just inspired by so many pictures that we've seen of him through, through the time. I used, I used 12 different colors of paint it, it's oil paint and it's, it's at least four layers on all of it maybe a little bit of sweat in the first few days and then when Shelton McCossie did the photo, photography of the, of, of the of painting that, that you'll see in the uh, we got prints made of in, out in the lobby his camera somehow figured out that, that there are 980,000 unique colors in the painting from those 12 tubes of paint. So the, the hanging, and, and pa hanging and framing the painting was another uh, fun experience, just getting it down off the wall in the studio, moving it over here, and then getting it up on the wall. Uh, we took eight sheets of plywood and ripped them with a skill saw and bought 600 feet of stock moldings, and they were all uh, primed. And then David Nicolet, the, uh, he managed to do all the spraying with a special gold paint that matches all the gold trim on all the altar and the anvil and all the pieces of the furniture, as well as, as the tabernacle. So this entire thing was really a religious experience for me because I prayed when I, before I started, while I was planning the painting, I prayed that I wasn't in over my head. I prayed that while we were, I was doing the painting, that it was going to turn out like I envisioned it. And I prayed when we were moving it over and hanging it, that we weren't going to drop it and, and tear it up or hurt somebody. And then I prayed when I was on that scissor lift, putting the last coat of varnish on it, there's three coats of varnish on it, that I would just survive the day. So. Uh, Father Patty said at Easter that resurrection was the most important event in human history. And I, what we were trying to do, and I hope what this painting does, is it represents a snapshot of another top ten event in human history when we were given the great gift of the Eucharist. And so I'm really proud and grateful for having played a small part in this beautiful church. Thank you.